Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Welcome. Good evening. Ooh, 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 ooh. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome, everybody. I've missed all of you. I've missed you so, 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 so much. Welcome from everywhere. Can I know where you're joining me from tonight? It's an honor to host you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Let me know where you are joining me from. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha. That's Yoruba language. Very powerful language. Good evening. Good evening. Where are you joining me from? God bless you all. United Kingdom, Ibadan, Nigeria. Tanzania, Atlanta, Georgia. Wow, 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 woo. Ooh, the UK, Lagos. Thank you. The UK, thank you so very much for being a part. United States of Akure, Abuja, Lagos, USA, Ghana. Ghana, I'm going to see you during Easter. Egypt, wow. USA, Ohio. UK Badun. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. The Lord bless all of you. Please share the link. Share the link. Share the link. Invite everyone. Bene City. I say all of you. Dublin in Ireland, South Africa, Johannesburg, beautiful city. Lusaka, Zambia, North Carolina, Canada. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, everyone. It's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor to have you here today. And I'm so excited about your being here. Hey, tonight we're going to talk about something very, very important. Very important. My opening remark, you know, tonight is from the book of Proverbs. The Bible says something and it is so, so, so profound. I mean so profound. I need to read it out to you. Keep joining. Keep joining. Mm-hmm. So, in the book of Proverbs, <laughs> chapter 4 and verse number 7, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. Thank you, <laughs> Winnipeg. And with all thy getting, get understanding. No matter what you have in life, you need wisdom, 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 wisdom. The ability to know what to do part-time. It's important. Wisdom. And tonight is an honor for me. Cameroon, Ilori, I see you. Spain. It's a global tribe. It's such an honor. Yes, so thank you. I'm reading your comments. <laughs> Wisdom is the principal thing. If somebody is wealthy, but is not wise, hey, hey, foolishness will make the wealth to disappear. Wisdom in every aspect of your life, very important. Germany, I see you. Houston, I see you. Wisdom, New York, I see you. Yes, yes, yes. Kenya, Montreal, Asaba. Okay, so wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, get it. A school without a school principal, you know it is the principal thing. And tonight, as I have advertised, I'm hosting a woman of wisdom, my own financial advisor. Hey, it's going to be great tonight, too. Sh Miss Shola, Ad Mrs. Shola Adesha King. Yeah. Managing money. Ah, we're going to hear it tonight. It's the second time I'm bringing her. And it's going to be a great time thank you i'm reading your comments and i'm really really appreciative of everything so mrs shola adesha king um will be joining us very soon um, 
Glory to God. Please invite other people. Yeah. And let's see what happens. Okay. She's going to be speaking to us about money. Hmm. Money matters. Let's talk about money. Let's talk about money. Now, oh, why is she unable to join? She should join. Let me say this also that once a week, because a lot of you send me questions, and please keep sending the questions. By God's grace, once a week on my YouTube channel. Oh, she's here. Thank God. On my YouTube channel, I'll be answering your questions. So please send your questions to info at funkefelixadejima.org. And I'll, by God's grace, be answering these questions. Welcome, Mrs. Adesha. We're so excited Good evening, to have you here. Good evening. I'm so in a very lovely. great place. How Thank you, you so much, man. I'm grateful. It's been our, our blessing. Ah, Shala, you are a blessing. To me, as Thank a you person, so much, you are man. a blessing. <laughs> God, to teach me how to be more intentional, more intentional about my finances. And then, you are so, the effrontery with which you handle I said, ah, I don't want to take a loan. Ah, I don't know how. You know, the courage, the confidence, the, oh, no, no, no. And that has helped my business a lot. And this is one of the reasons why I'm always bringing you to the public space that God has given to me so you can impart wisdom to all of us because nobody knows it all. Who is uh, outside of Adi Shaki, outside, outside of Forbes, Outside of <laughs> the fame, the fame, outside, of the, you know, the everything. Oh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And then from there, please. Thank you so me. much, Mama. I really, 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 really appreciate you for the mentoring, for the support, uh, uh, for the right hand of fellowship that you give to people of my generation and the younger generation. Uh, you honor people so much. You bring out the best in us. You look out for our good. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on, but I just want to thank you on behalf of every one of us for being an exemplary leader and role model. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'm excited thank to be here tonight. Uh, most times when I'm not talking about finances, I'm just your regular girl from Shagamu in Nigeria. <laughs> um, I was born into a family of nine, a polygamous family. Uh, my dad, late dad of blessed memory, uh, was a businessman who had four wives, of course. And um, to a large extent, he contributed to who I have become today, and especially my mom. I remember that um, Maybe seven years, even before I knew what ICANN was, was when my mom had bought ICANN funds. Now, ICANN means the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. So when I was not even ready, when I didn't know what accounting was, was when my mom bought the forms and kept those forms in her wardrobe. And she would continue to say, you, you'll be an accountant. Even when I didn't realize what I wanted to become. And then she kept those forms. And um, in secondary school, I was such a bright student that after we did, uh, we did our GSS3 exams, our GSS3 is like the midway of high school or secondary school, I was one of the best. And by default, they sent me to the science class. I've never, never wanted to do sciences. But my results were so outstanding. And then I started to go for chemistry classes, but, but I was struggling. I didn't like it. And I remember when my mom would tell me that you like figures, you'll be, a, you'll be a good accountant. So I struggled. My dad wanted me to be a medical doctor, the first in the family. But, you know, for whatever reasons, I struggled with chemistry and account and biology and physics, even though I was bright in other areas. And, you know, in accounting, I was such commerce and economics. So I had to tell my, my principal, I was maybe 13, 
because I, I, I got into school really early. So I told my principal that, you know, ma, the, 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 I'm not caught out for physics or chemistry. And I'm glad that she, she didn't impose, you know, whatever it was on me to say, no, you have to become a doctor. Yeah, yeah you are so brilliant and intelligent. And that's why we, we put you here. Because maybe uh, there wouldn't have been a Shola, Adeshaki, Forbes coach, chartered accountant. I probably would have just been a mediocre doctor struggling somewhere, you know. So I'm glad. I, I think I'm a product of my mom's tenacity. And then my father decided that, yeah, let her do accounting. And then my principal who said, okay, okay, leave her. She says she doesn't want to do medicine. So leave her to go to the commercial class. And um, I give God the glory. Uh, uh, I started the ICANN exams right after I left secondary school, uh, no, right after I left university. And within one and a half years, I qualified. And that, that is me. So that, that's my background. But right now, you know, it's been a journey because I qualified about 21 years ago. So it's been a journey. You know, the journey of perseverance, a journey of my very first job, even as a chartered accountant, I was earning 900 naira per month. You know, I started out with a church as a church accountant and it's just been a journey. And when I was going to move to Lagos, you know, it was as if my friends had gone ahead of me. Because they came out of school, you know, got jobs in Shell and Chevron, but I worked for my church for about three years. And then, you know, I was ready to come and look at it. I mean, I can't even remember the days of earning 900 naira as a chartered accountant. But all of those things, I think, also um, helped me cultivate contentment. I'm highly contented. Uh, just like Paul say, said in the Bible, I've learned to abase, I've learned to abound. You know, I, I'm, you, you would never catch me complaining about it. I don't want this and that. I'm contented because of where I've been. And I, I've lived a life of sacrifice as well. Sacrifice for my parents, for church, for my friends. And, and that's why I have. Well, right now, when I am not doing finances, when I'm not talking about money, I love my family. I'm a mom of three boys. My husband is a fantastic guy who has allowed me shine. Uh, so I'm home just, you know, having fun, watching TV, even though sometimes I, I work so hard that I'm like, ah, am I supposed to be watching TV now? There's something I'm done. You know, the life of an entrepreneur, there's something I'm supposed to be doing, but I've learned to sort of manage things. Uh, I'm getting better. I love to watch movies, to unwind. I love the company of my friends, you know, just to hang out, just a few of them, just to enjoy life. So that's me in a nutshell. But I love God and I serve in my church. I serve. Fantastic. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, let me keep this question till when you are done. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Talk about Thank money. You. So but the I am glad question. that I've been able to share a bit of my experience. Remember I said that I qualified as a chartered accountant about 22 years ago and you know stemming from my intelligence my love for figures and all of those things and i was fortunate when i left my first job i came to lagos you know i got a good job i started to earn well and um, one thing i realized was the fact that as at that time i wasn't married i didn't really have a lot of responsibilities but i was always broke i was always broke at at some point, I, I was living with my mom, so I wasn't paying rent. I mean, I didn't have anything that was excessively in demand of my funds. But I was always broke, always miserable. And I remember that each time I went to church and they called for those who needed special prayers, I would always come out because I thought I needed prayers regarding my finances. In those days, we don't call them village people. We just say maybe you have spiritual problems or you need deliverance. Each time there was a call, I would come and say, Father, what's wrong with me? How could I be earning about half a million? And by, by, by week two, I was broke. I couldn't explain it. So I, I just started to. Then one day, um, a lady that was working with me, who was earning about one-tenth of, of what I was earning, came to me and said, Ma, I know you travel a lot. You know, I, I, I need to apply for my visas. And, and this lady was in about 50,000 50, per month. And I said, yes, bring it. Let me help you with your form. 
And then she brought her form and everything, and then brought a statement that showed that she had about four million naira in savings. Ah! I was earning half a million, she was earning 50,000. I didn't have, as at that time, 250,000 naira in my account. And this was somebody who was earning 50,000 in her account, having four million naira. And I looked at her life, simple lifestyle. She would pack her food to work, you know, when we were doing Bugade, yeah, order something, she would pack her food. When I saw that document, I'm like, did somebody add money to this? Well, no, she said she's been saving, you know, any cash money, anything, she would save it. I'm like, wow. So I sat down and I sort of retrospected. What was I doing with my, mom, with my money? I'll tell you what, what I was doing with my money. I didn't have any direction. In those days, Delta would sell tickets to Atlanta for 90,000 naira. I wish they could bring back those days. <laughs> they would sell tickets to the UK, BA, a hundred thousand. And then if there was a public holiday around the corner, it was time to move. And then I'll get on the plane, 50,000, uh, hundred thousand tickets. Here we go. I remember my very first trip to the US. It was just one of those public holidays. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I have a US visa, my first time. And then I got on the plane, I got to the point of entry, and then they welcomed. Oh, yeah, why are you in America? Hey, I'm just here for a conference. How many days? I think I said four days or so. And the man looked at me, four days in America, are you sure? Hey, yeah, I said, I, I'm going to Orlando, but my friends are waiting for me there, you know. And then from one person, I had seven people surrounding me, and they delayed me at the airport for eight hours because they couldn't be believe that somebody will come to America for four days, first time. So they just assumed that maybe some people gave me some drugs. Ah, I'm like, who sent me? So the encounter with the ladies' encounter made me realize that, wait, wait, mm -hmm. I may not even have the, the I, I may not have demonic problems, actually. I, uh, maybe there, there's, there's nothing wrong with me. Maybe I'm just you know, not, you know, financially savvy enough. But that wasn't enough. I still continued in my ways. You know, when a man is devoid of understanding, the Bible says that a man that is in a place of honor and does not know, is like, like a beast that perishes. I saw all the signs. And then what happened? At some point, on this very, very good job, I decided that I will start on the job and that I wanted to resign because I had a lot of qualifications. And I felt that, yeah, you know, in one month or two months, I'll get another job. And it was around that time I was getting married. So my husband to be then, who is not my husband, I, he said, Shola, why do you want to resign? I'm like, no, no, I'm tired of that job. You know, I'm going to be a new bride. I'm going to get a new job. And I was resigning without having a hundred thousand in my savings. You know, when, 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 when God wants to catch you, like, you, would, you don't want to hear. Okay. So I resigned. I remember my boss, he flew into the UK for our wedding. On a, the wedding was a Sunday. He came in on a Saturday. And he said, Shola, you're a destiny helper to me. I'm a destiny. Don't leave. And I know. I find that. After the um, wedding, I came back home. No job, of course. And then... I was like a Jonah to my husband because around that time also, they made some decisions that backfired. So from earning half a million to not having a, whole, a thousand naira. And as if that was not yeah. enough, I fell pregnant, like they say. <laughs> and then I, I got pregnant and my own pregnancy was a type that four weeks into pregnancy, my whole nose was like this. So who was going to employ a pregnant person? And it went on. It was, it was a, the, the roughest part of my life. I couldn't believe it. Ma, that was the deliverance I needed. So it was a time to introspect. And I'm saying this, I'm, I'm going you know, down memory lane because when I talk to people about their finances, some people will be like, you don't understand my point. It's as if I, 
if something is, is in control of my head when it comes to spending money, I, I'm not able to discipline myself. More often than not, you, there's something wrong with you. It's a matter of taking the right choices. We are a product of our choices when it comes to finance. And Francis Bacon says that money is a great servant, but a bad leader. And I agree. Ma, there was a study or a survey that was done a couple of years ago, and they said, you know, the, 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 the respondents, out of many issues such as career, such as um, family, such as social issues, more people had financial stress as the major stressor in their lives. I wish, I mean, if this was a Zoom meeting, I would have shared my screen. So I go back to that quote. Francis Bacon says, money is a great servant, but a bad leader. And this is what I tell people. Money is inanimate. It's not a living thing. You and I are animate. We are living things created in the image of God. Money cannot be smarter than us. We cannot continue to say, I don't know where my money is going. Are you the leader to your money? Or is your money your leader? Those were the things I realized. I had to stop saying, I don't know what's wrong. Yes, don't get me wrong. Money loves mobility. Money loves speed. Ma, if you withdraw 20,000 naira from your ATM and you don't have plans for it on a Friday, by Sunday morning, gone. That's money. They, they call money currency, derived from the word current. It moves. If you have been to the bad beach, of, if you see waters, you know how it moves on the sea. That's money. So if you, that's why they say mm. it's a bad leader because if you allow money to control you, you'll be depressed, you'll be sad. Look at it. Some of us, actually almost everybody, when you are broke, you look at your bank mm. account and you see that the thing is going down. You sort of feel sad. Right? Because money is, you know, doing your head somehow. But if you know how to tame your money, that's right. That quote says money is a great servant. If, if you're able to say, you know what, my money... 20% is going to mutual fund, even before it comes. 10% I'm giving it out as my fight. 40% I am giving it, I am using it for our groceries, for everything that we need to do. 20% I am going to use it to take care of myself because I work. Ma, the system is designed to take from us. We must be right. From taxes to vendors to landlords, so you must, I, I tell women, I tell everybody, you must also make provisions to take care of yourself. So as your money is coming in or before it comes in, you are planning. Ma, you are a planner. I know you. I know how meticulous you are with your money. 10% goes to my tithes. 20% goes to my maybe offering or I want to give people charity. 40% goes into this month, we will pay internet, we will pay rent. 20% goes into my savings. The remaining 10% is for YOLO. You only live once. I have a friend who goes to the restaurant every month when she earns her salary. She will order a good plate of food and she will say, spirit, soul, and body, we have done it this month, oh. Well done, oh. Eat, oh, to the satisfaction of yourself. Let's do it again next month. You are taking care of the engine because you are the engine. People want to come and collect from me. If anything happens to you, they move on to the next person. So I'm telling all of these things to make you realize that you indeed can tell your money where to go. Rather than say, I don't know. Let's stop saying it. In fact, I am mandating everybody. Stop saying, I don't know where my money is going. If you say that, then you're saying that money is smarter than you. And money is not a living thing. So, money takes on the nature of the person who owns it. If you're a saver, your money will flow with you. If you're a spender, your money will, will have wings to spend. So what am I saying, just to sort of summarize this particular session? Guys, 
you do not have any spiritual problems with money. There's people chasing you. As long as you, you are making money, as long as you are alive, as long as you have skills to make money, you only need to start to take control. People need rain, like rain, like oxygen. They are tools, they are resources to help us live an amazing life. Sometimes you don't have to, well, except when we feel that rain, rain is not falling as adequately as it should. That's when we say, God, let there be rain. But we don't even need to do anything rain before. Money, I say, ah, give me part of your oxygen. Give me part of your oxygen. There's oxygen enough to go around. Just know how to use it. See money like that. Money, there's money in abundance. The only thing is that money flows to the people who know how to use it. And it flows away from the hands of those who keep saying, I don't know where my money is going. You know, somebody gave a, an analogy and said, money is like a woman who visits your home. And the fact is, when the woman, money visits you, impregnate her. Bear needs for you so that she will have children for you. But most of money comes to us. Ah, we speak. Spend it. In fact, money, money will not like to come back because the way you spend that money, even when you say, this one, this one will kill us. But when you nurture your money and you say, you know what? Savings, investments, groceries, tithes, giving, that is you, you know what? Controlling your money. Money will keep coming back because life is based on principles. When you understand these things, your life will change because my life changed. Ma, from being an unrepentant spendthrift, who didn't know where our money was going. These days, I literally forget some money is in an account because it doesn't rule me again. So God, I still do money in one savings. Eh? Shit me. My life can become like this where money does not get me exasperated. When I look at my bank account, I'm like, ah, this thing is going down. I just believe that somehow money will come by giving value, by way of gifts. It will come. So I don't allow money exasperate me. You know, Ma, I could go on and on. Let me allow you to ask another question. <laughs> Ooh, I just want you to... Just this is this is amazing, you know. I can never be tired of listening to you. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, man. So that, that's a fun thing. And yes, I, I see the comments. When money comes to you, don't don't just allow impregnate it. How do you impregnate money? You save and invest so that it yields interest. If you don't do, do that, the money comes and it goes. That's why when they where's my money? Even if money goes, because you have impregnated it and it has yielded interest it will come back you know why because a mother comes back looking for her children so the money will keep coming i know i battered some things there let me go back there when the money comes again impregnate it again it will give birth that's how to retain money and let me tell you if you are here you're listening to me and you'll be like no i will come to tips on investment you see that, that's 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 what I see. A lot of people want to do. Ah, let's invest. Oh, ah, what she saying? But the things that I am saying here are mindset issues that are foundational. It, it's not just about I want to invest. You can invest and invest in rubbish. Ma, as a chartered accountant, my fourth investment was in Ponzi scheme. A friend of mine who who was also a chartered accountant said, ah, Shola, there's one something. If you put 300,000 in six weeks, you will get times three. Hey, hey, where is it? I called my sister, my, my senior friend in the UK. Bring your money, bring your money. Ma, 17 years ago, we invested about 1.6 million. It was two weeks before our time that the thing folded. So the person, ah, we talk about investment. We will get there. When we talk about Financial literacy, there are three things I want you to know if you're listening to me. There is the mindset side of money. 
That's all I've been saying. To make you realize that, see, money is about mindset. There is the knowledge side of money, which is what I am talking about, which is what you will listen to. And there is this skill set side of money, which is I want to budget, I want to save, I want to invest. A lot of people that I know, they want to do the skill set. They want to take action. But they are not minding the mindset of money. And that's why I'm taking my time. Yes, psychology of money. That's why I'm taking my time to say, understand the mindset of money and your life will change. That's what changed to me. If my mindset about money did not change, I wouldn't be here. That's why I'm saying, listen, calm down. It's not just by people, where can I invest? Though? All of the investments you have been doing, what have they done for you? Do you see? So, mindset is important. Some of us, we have limiting beliefs about money. That's mindset. Ah, in my family, nobody has ever become a millionaire. I have a cousin who lives in Canada who told me one day, she said, Shola, I can never be a millionaire. In this Canada, I just want to make money to eat, to feed my family. I'm like, why are you talking like this? He said, it's true now. And that's what a lot of us do. And that's why we abuse rich people. Some people are so envious of people who are doing well that they think everybody doing well must be doing politics or rituals because they don't believe that people can be genuinely rich. It's mindset. And some of us say wrong things about money. Some of us, you see people, yeah, I'm not saying people should flaunt what they have on Instagram, but even if they flaunt it, it is their own. But you now see somebody genuinely happy and say, what was even wrong with this one? It's all mindset. The Bible says, oh, we brought nothing into this world and we will take nothing out of it. See, this money game, it is in this world. We are, we are playing it. So if you see somebody who is wealthy, it is another, it's, it's an indication that you can be wealthy yourself. Do you see? It's an indication that if there can be a dangote, why can't, be a, why, can't be a, why can't I be a dangote? Why can't I be a noted dollar? Why can't I have enough money to meet my needs? There's enough money to go. When they say, ah, there's no money, there's no money. God doesn't do monetary policy. He doesn't mop up the funds like Central Bank does. God doesn't change Naira. He doesn't change the design. What simply happens is that money moves from one person to another. I read a, 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 statistic, a piece of statistics a, a, a few years ago, and they said, see, the maybe 80% or 90% of the money in this world is in the hands of 2%. The most money is in the hands of just a few. Who are they? They don't have two heads. We, we can learn these things. And that's why when you see rich people, the confidence that they, that they, that they show, you're like, I was wrong. It's a mindset thing. I'm going to come to savings and I'm looking at the time. I'm going to come to investments. But I want us to trash this mindset issue once and for all tonight. That money will not inundate me again. Money will not get me. Have you seen couples fight over money? Ma, somebody was telling me about how a driver and a house help connived to kill a couple over 5,000 pounds. Ah! Hey! When they say money is a bad leader, that's what it means. The man wasn't feeling well. They were going to move him or take him abroad. And the house help overhead, you know, that they changed money to dollar pounds and they killed the couple. Why do you think people do rituals? Why do you think people kill other people to make money? It is important, guys. Let's not just be about, hey, no, we just talk about how can multiply. Check your mindset about money. Okay. So I'll move on from that mindset how can you ch check your mind change your mindset about money read books have conversations with yourself talk to yourself about your money sometimes i'm like hey calm down calm down it's money it's money ah i tell myself maybe i bought something maybe for ten thousand naira extra by mistake and then i'm moving i'm like wait now it's ten thousand calm down calm down another day do your due diligence better sometimes people lose some money we
person costs it's money. Now, the second thing is we must get knowledge. And this is what we're doing. This is what Mama is doing for us tonight. You must read books, follow those who know, take courses, listen to YouTube videos. It's not a matter of age. Ma, my, my father bec became a millionaire for the first time in his late 50s. Late 50s. Because he just decided that, you know what, I'm doing business, I'm going to be work. And then he burned the late car, the, the, the candle, I mean, how do they put it? Look at mama going back to school to learn law. I've been thinking there's something that bad on my mind. Yeah, I will not go and do this thing now. Knowledge. Then skill sets. How do I save? How do I budget? How do I uh, manage my resources? I tell people there are three ends of money. Make it, manage it, multiply it. Raise and repeat. Make it, manage it. So all of these things I'm saying, I, I can't give you all of the points tonight. I'm just trying to open your eyes to the things that you need to change about your finances. Number one, change your mindset. Number two, acquire knowledge on a continuous basis. And then number three, learn the skills. Let me tell you a few skills you need to learn. Budgeting. How do you budget? I've given you examples. When you collect your salary or before you collect your salary, map it out on paper. This is my phone. As a chartered accountant and a finance coach, I manage my money to the T. In fact, today I was thinking that I would share something on my Instagram page to show people the apps that I use to manage my own money. And I'm going to share it. So I manage my When my money comes, when, you know, I, immediately what is going into savings, I remove it after my tax, my offering. What am I giving? Do you understand? Then what, what are we spending at home between my husband and I? What are the projects at home? I teach the 50, 30, 20 rule. 50% of your money should go into your necessities, and that should include your price. Now, 30% or 20% should go into your savings and investment, and the remaining 20% should, you should use it to take care of yourself. That's budgeting. How do you save? Saving means that you put money aside. And I tell people it is not enough to save, you must invest. Saving is putting money aside. Investing is putting money to work. Saving teaches you consistency. Investing teaches you tenacity. So you must learn to put aside. And don't say, ah, the money I'm making is too small, I can't save. If you cannot save when you are earning little, you won't be able to save when you earn much. If you cannot save 2,000 naira from 20,000, you will not be able to save 20,000 from 200,000. So build the muscles, no matter how small. It is not about the quantity of the money, but the consistency that every month, every month, I'm putting money aside. Then you will not put that money to work. You have put it aside month one, month two, month three, or week one, week two. As long as you have a minimum of 5,000 Naira, you can start to invest because there are mutual funds that you can start with a minimum of 5,000 naira. These days, there's a tiny line or blurry line between savings and investment. Before, if you didn't have 1 million, 2 million, you can't invest. Now, if you have 5,000 naira, just go into it. I don't want to mention names of banks, but just say, I want to start my money market mutual fund. Start to put the money there. These days, you can buy fractional shares. Amazon, $10, whatever. That one is 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 high risk, but if you hold it for a long time, you will get your returns. You can do dollar mutual fund in Nigeria with a minimum of one thousand dollars. You start your dollar mutual fund every month or whenever you have five hundred dollars, add to it. That's investing. That's the skill. So there are saving skills, investing skills, and on my investment, there are low risk investments. There are high risk investments. When I say knowledge. A mindset. It's it's not the the Ramsey says building wealth is a marathon, it's not a sprint. It's not I just want to be wealthy overnight. It takes a long time, but raising and repeating and doing the same, uh, doing what is right. So investing, know that there are low risk, ask questions, know that there are high risk. The low risk, that's what you should be doing to build your money. Small, 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 small. But you know, our people in Nigeria and everywhere, we want money that will double in two weeks. Now lie. There's nothing such as that. 
So you take it one day at a time. What other skills can you learn? Skills like um, so managing your money, investing, budgeting, saving, those are skills that you can learn. And so let me, let, let me stop this particular session here. Don't forget, you need mindset, you need knowledge, and you need skill set. Important. Let me go into a, another topic that I would like for us to discuss as women. Because I know there are a lot of women watching this, and men who are watching can share with their wives. Those who watch the replay can also share. I was reading some, you know, uh, article recently that said that, you know, as women, we're on the receiving side when it comes to finances. And there are a lot of odds stacked against women generally. And I'll share, share with you. And that's, you know, this second phase of this conversation is an admonition for us as women to take our finances more seriously. I'm going to share five points. Number one, because, I mean, today is the 28th. We are still in the International Women's Day month, and it's a good one for, for women. There's a gender pay gap. That's what we're doing. The thing that men will get higher pay for, just naturally, and those are the things that we're trying to say, International Women's Day, let there be equality, let there be this and that, until we get there. The truth is that there is gender pay gap as women. Even in business, some people, they want to buy something. If it's a woman, they negotiate it to the last thing. If it's a man, they say, okay, okay, just because. So as women, we must realize that the marketplace does not exactly favor women. So you bear that in mind. Number two, women take a lot of career breaks more than men. Do you agree with me? I know somebody who has taken several maternity breaks in her lifetime. I, I don't, I, I'm not here to say why, but A, even if it is two children or three children, women take more career break, breaks than men. And you know what that means? Even if they pay you maternity leave, there are some other things you are not getting that the guys are getting. That's number two. Number three, it has been said that women have a longer lifespan. A lot of women outlive their husbands. So women that say, no, it is my husband that is taking care of our, of our finances. I don't know what is happening. Ah, don't do that again, even if you are still very young. Because most women are and women who abdicated every financial role and responsibility to their husband when the man leaves. They will not be like, I don't know. Where is the checkbook? I don't know. Where is the account? I don't know. <laughs> you know. Women must not abdicate financial responsibilities to anybody. I'm not saying don't submit your husband. I'm saying be involved. No, don't say, it's my husband. He's the one that does everything. I don't even know. Ah, He's a very caring man. I know he's caring. But I'm just telling you what is happening. Women have a longer lifespan. And you don't want your husband gone and then you're struggling and then you, you are lost. I'm telling you reasons as women why we must take our finances more seriously. Another reason is that women lack confidence man. when it comes to finances. These days I am happy that a lot of women are now ma, have you noticed that these days we talk less about bags? We talk like less about bone uh, uh, straight, uh, bone straight or muscle pool or ferragamo or Gucci. These days, women talk a lot more about investments, and it gives me joy. But we still lack confidence, and that's why we come together. You see, they are they have done a deal; they have moved on. And we are still saying, eh, "Is it? Should we? Should we not?" These are things that women face that we must try to overcome. Women have higher health care costs. Women are the ones that we do mammogram, that we do pap smear, ma, that we do this, that we spend more, more than the men. Women are the ones on period every month. Do accumulate, a, 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 like a calculation of what you spend as a woman from puberty to menopause. The guys don't spend it. So as women, see, 
the, the onus is on us to take our finances more seriously. And then women have fewer access to resources in the marketplace. So I'm sharing this as part of my own contribution to this International Women's Day to every woman listening to this. Don't say I don't understand figures. Don't say I don't like maths. Like maths. Like, don't, don't, don't be watching TV and they are talking about economic. You say, what's my own business? Don't put Z what? African magic. Don't say that. Don't think that financial news and economic news are for men alone. Stop it. And don't think you are too old to understand financial issues. I was sharing over the weekend and I said, when I was growing up, my mother was such a serial premier. My mother was a secretary in a very fantastic office and she was doing business. My mom would travel to Heathrow from work on a Friday night. The whole of Saturday she would shop. Monday she comes back to work with her, with her luggage of things to sell. Going back to that, my mother should have become a billionaire by today. My mom did catering. I followed her to places where we sold a car. We sold food. Hard work. But you know what? Ah, my husband is the one. I don't understand finances. We must not make those same mistakes. We must do better and pass on good legacy to our children. The Bible says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I, I, I tell people I want to be a grandmother. When my grandchildren learn that I am coming, they're happy because they know grandma will give us money. This is not grandma and colleague. You have not sent me credit. Mama, that's what you teach us. A grandma tells me, don't worry, I will buy you a car. Don't worry, on your birthday. That's who I want to be. And that's what I see in you. So ladies, let's not keep saying, I, I don't understand maths. How can you not understand maths when it comes to money? It's debit and credit. What came in, what came out. You must, you must be disciplined. Why do you think the richest men in the world never stop trying to make more money? Because one is a millionaire or billionaire. It's not forever a millionaire or billionaire. There is inflation. There is devaluation in Nigeria. Three years ago, if you had 360 million, you are a million, a million dollars. Today, if you have 360 million, million naira that is half a million the forces of devaluation so they say walking to low that means money is never that's why you see the richest man he's doing uh, tesla today he's doing twitter tomorrow he's doing space it's not big they can't spend all of that money but if you if you leave more money in a static state it will depreciate if you are not investing your money it is depreciating and that was why my, in the Bible, the master that called three of his servants, the first one got additional five, the second one got additional two, that one, the master said, at least you could have put my money in a bank to be any interest. Because if you do not do that, the value of that money is depreciating. So when you this rich people, what do they even want? They understand the things that the people who are not because we, we are rich in Jesus' name. They understand that you cannot just hold your hands and say, because I have one million dollars, I am rich forever. I am made forever. No way. If you do not manage your resources well, that money will decrease in value. Do you see? So as women, I'm wrapping up this, this part of it. Remember that there are a lot of things militating against us. As women. So this is an age where when they are talking about money, you are saying, say it again. Uh -huh. What did you say? And this is not about, I have it, I have BSA, I have masters. Money doesn't answer to professional qualification. Money answers to the right principles. And that's why you go to Balogu market, you see people who didn't go to primary school controlling billions on a monthly basis. So it's not about education. They are broke PhD holders. They are broke MBA holders. It's principle. Know how to make it, know how to manage it, know how to multiply it. And as women, at the Women Edge earlier in January, I was sharing some statistics about the things ahead. See, the, the, 
there are a couple of things I heard that favor women. But there's work transfer happening. And that's what you see right now all over the world, there are among women presidents. For the first time, the finance minister, the, the, the secretary, um, what was the word? Treasury. I mean, the treasurer or secretary of the treasury of the U.S. for the first time is a woman. Canada, woman. Spain, woman. Even Nigeria, woman. Things are happening. In Nigeria, you see a lot of GTP, um, sorry, bank envies. Women. This is women in tech. Women. Are you taking your space? Are you understanding financial principles? So that when the money comes, you're not saying, I don't understand. If you are a friend with somebody who keeps saying, I don't understand you, will you continue to be the person, person's friend? So why you continue to say, I don't understand money? Money will not, money say, this one is not ready. But we are saying not just be friends with money, impregnate money and make it stay. Even if it goes because the money has children with you, it will keep coming back. That's what it is, man. So let me stop. <laughs> I know I've been talking, talking. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Wow, Mrs. Akshakin, thank you so, so very much. As always, okay. this is mind blowing. I know we say how one minute. Can you? People are asking, how can they get out of debt? Is it okay to take loans? I've taken loans, for instance, from your company, like two or three times to help my own business, and I'm so happy that I did that. You and company, I paid interest, and you know. So is it right? So there are two questions now. How do you get out of debt? Because it's just amazing. Impregnate <laughs> money. I've never had that before. Right. Thank you, ma'am. So let. let answer those two questions and they are brilliant questions um let, let me talk about debt before talking about how to get out of debt. now we, we can look at debts from two different perspectives most times i am very conservative when it comes to debts because i'm like i don't want anything that will not make me sleep or i don't want wala. but debt is bad when you are borrowing for consumables you want to buy a shabby to borrow money. What are you doing? <laughs> you want to buy TV? I was consulting for somebody who was trying to get out of debt. And as we were talking about it, she said, hey, Coach, let me just tell you that for summer, we will travel. Because if we don't go, when my children come back from summer, their friends will ask them where they went for summer. I said, you called me, you paid me to come and help you plan your finances. We have not even finished. You are adding debt to debt. And let me tell you, hmm. <laughs> social media has, it's a good thing, but to many, it's a bad thing. You see people who flaunt things on social media, you do not know how they get, or how they got it. You want to buy all means, get it, because if you don't get it, it will look like you are not. You, are, you, do, you don't need validation from anybody. It is what you can afford by time. So don't borrow. Never, ever borrow for consumables. If you are borrowing to eat, then there's a problem with your money flow. We will talk about that before I finish, hopefully. If you are borrowing to eat because you don't have, there's a problem with your money flow. I'm not saying starve. But it's not a sustainable way of life. So don't borrow for consumables. Now, when it comes to business, should I borrow? I will say yes for everybody because some people are not disciplined. Some people do not understand business. Some people do not under, they do not have integrity. Ma, there are people that we have borrowed money in my investment club. Some of them have relocated. Tomorrow, ma, four years. Four years, they have not paid the money back. A friend borrowed money from me 13 years ago on a Sunday in church. He said, Shola, ah, give me 30,000. I'll give it tomorrow. Maybe my wife, after this prayer, after this, uh, this call, you will pray for me and then she will come in to return the money tomorrow. 13 years. So, for business, let me tell you if, you, if you live in Nigeria, for those who live in Nigeria, business in Nigeria is not for the faint-hearted. So, if you Borrowing money for business, you must be doing it with sense and with a plan and with a backup plan. 
and with an accountant and with projections. Because if it was me or four years ago, I would say don't borrow. But I see that sometimes business needs that push. So don't borrow for consumables. If it is for business, seek advice. Do the right things. Don't just borrow because they said there's a so don't be hasty to borrow money. Sit down, weigh your cost. The Bible says that who amongst you would want to build a tower? And will not first of all sit down. Hey, sit down, man. You know something that happened be uh, between us recently. I learned from it. Check all your options properly. Be a person of integrity. So if you do not have to borrow, don't borrow. In Nigeria, it is hard to do business with other people's money. You will not see it. Now, I have taken people to police station this year. I have taken people to court. The baby that does not want to sleep, that does not want his mother to sleep, he himself self will not sleep. And you don't want your name going into the rec records of offenders, of people, you know. And then overseas, because I know there are a lot of people watching this from overseas. You know how your credit score will be badly. The things we do in Nigeria, we can't do them overseas. You borrow money, you are not paying back. You buy something, you, you change your identity. You can do it. The Bible says the borrower is always a servant to the lender. But in the same Bible, when the children of Israel were going to go out of Egypt, they said, go and borrow, go and take their gold. That was, that was a strategy. Now, you are in debt. How do you get out of it? Let me be frank with you. As much as you can, make attempt to pay your debts back. That's number one. Number two, be in touch with your creditors. Don't just go. I have two people, very great relationships. They broke quiet, collected money. All of a sudden, we have become enemies because they didn't want to pay back. We all know what's happening around the world. Understanding. I'm sorry, I've not been able to pay. Please permit me to pay small small. Small small is better than not paying. I'm going for it. Number three, have a plan. Okay. And I pay this person back. What is coming in? Number four, in the midst of it all, as you are repaying your debt, make sure. You are still saving. Because if you don't save, what got you into that debt will continue to get you into it. I tell people that paying your debt is an obligation to the past. Saving money is an obligation to your future. So as you pay debt, you must be saving. Do you see? So some of you might say, you don't know how ah, my debt is a lot. I am telling you, if you do not save, and you just say, let me just pay back, the, pay, back, pay back the debt. If anything happens, you will go back borrowing. And then you know what? You will continue to widen that pit of debt. You don't want that. So my, my, what I teach about payment of debt is not conventional, but it is what it is. Don't forget, I said, sit down to analyze your debt. Be in touch with your creditors. Number three, stop borrowing. Number four, save even as you pay back your debt. Number five, if you are always in debt, there's something wrong with your money flow. Remember I said it. Is it that you're not making enough money? Most people, I empathize with people. It's not a spending problem. Some people do not have spending problem because they are not overspending. It is income problem they have because the income they are making is not enough. So most times, I, I don't just write people off to say, no, you're spending too much. No. I sit there and say, what are you earning? If you're making 80,000 rand per month and your monthly obligations are 200, you will borrow money. It is not so. And I tell people, there are some expenses you cannot cut down on. Is it food for your children? Is it rent? Let's not just be saying, cut down your expenses. No. So the truth is, how then can I increase the money I am making? If that is where I'm going to stop tonight, I don't mind. There comes a time in your life where jack of all trade is what you will do. Whatever your hands find to do, do it. The child 
accountant, mm. I have sold donuts. I put egg roll. Mm. I will wait at 2 a.m. Rolling donuts, rolling egg roll that we will take to church on Sunday morning to sell. Because the money that I made from it was fueling my car conveniently, extra source of income. You see, the reason I stopped was because I, I, I didn't want to make a big business out of it. I'm like, no, no, this one will be People in my community say, know me. I preach multiple sources of income man, because a credit alert, no matter how small, will move you forward than a debit alert. If you want to buy 1000 and you have 4,990 naira in your account. Transaction declined. If somebody sends you 10 naira at that point, what will happen? That's a lifesaver. So don't say that <laughs> you don't know me. I'm not bragging, but ah, ma, this education and qualification, I don't try. I'm an accountant in three oh. continents. I'm a fellow of ICANN in Nigeria. I'm a fellow of ACCA in the UK. I am a chartered professional accountant of Canada. Respect. I paid my dues. But when it comes to money, hmm. I do what it is. You cannot be shy. There's nothing such as the shame money. Me, don't look at me for me to talk. <laughs> How does that amount to money in your bank account? <laughs> <coughs> I'm, I'm going to laugh. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. What a night. What a night. What a night. What a night. Mr. Deja King, you have been to my resort before. I sell food. I sell on this. I have a, a salon. For nails, for hair, I sell a direct. I sell earrings. Jack of all trades oh. and master of all. Master of all. There's no shame money. She said tomatoes. They will not write it on it. Tomatoes. So I was telling you, ma, that there's a point in your life where you will be jack of all trades, just to make ends meet. And the time will come. You know what? From, from rolling donuts at night, you enter into some rooms later in the day and you are speaking Queen's English. It's okay. Make money. Listen to me. Some of you listening to this, you do not have spending problems. You have income problems. Your money, the money you are making is not enough. And you must necessarily do something because you cannot be at the mercy of people all the time give me give me give me i'll rather mm -hmm. go and sell mm -hmm. that to be begging i'm not saying don't ask her, but it cannot be a way of life mama it is 903 i can't continue to tomorrow let me stop here oh my god oh my god thank you so much shall i tell us how to reach you tell us the programs you have because people, some people may want to take this to the next level. It's so informative, impactful. Tell us your social media handles. Tell us everything that you. Thank you so much. You know, so my social know. media handles: Shola Deshaki, Shola underscore Deshaki. Um, this is what you're, you're watching this on. You can follow me, and uh, you should follow at Smart Stewards. At Smart Stewards. That's you know my platform through which we teach financial literacy. Our vision is is very simple and our mission. We want to help Africans at home and in the diaspora build wealth. So whether you have been located to the UK or you have been located to the US, we want to provide timely information to help you in Nigeria and just around the world to settle into your country. We want people who jackpot to make money. We love them. We still love them even though they have jackpot. Some people will jackpot that, but the ones who don't, who don't jackpot that, let them prosper. So we do that through Smart Stewards. We run the Smart Stewards Academy. It's, it's a subscription-based uh, platform that you can be on 
for six months or one year. It's 50,000 to join for six months, 90,000 to join for one year. We provide courses. All of these things I'm saying to you, they are there. There are courses to get an accountability partner. We do webinars. We have fantastic coaches that would share these things with you. So I am encouraging you. Remember we talked about mindset, knowledge, and skill set. Come and join Smart Stewards, wherever you are in the world. We have chapters in the UK, chapters in the US, chapters in Canada. We have different resources to help you. They say that it is insanity to be doing the same thing and ex expecting a different result. See, the first quarter of this year is going to four days more in March. Don't think that, that things will change in quarter two, quarter three, quarter four without you taking action. In the, some of us spend more than 50,000 naira on many things within a month. When we say pay 50,000 for six months, come and learn financial literacy. The circle and the people you move with also will affect your life. Move with the right people. You know, watch the right things. Engage the right things. Engage your mind. That's what we do as smart students. You know, and it just gives me... When I talk about money, my passion shines through. Because I don't want you to go through the same mistake. You know, what, when I said earlier on that I went through a rough patch, mm -hmm. you know, you have tackled Juba. As in, I couldn't have explained it. So I see young people and I'm like, do not despair. Do not think you can't do well with your finances. I saw a comment, somebody said, we don't have it. Work at making 50,000 naira more. So you don't, don't just say, some of us don't have, you cannot remain at that level. Money gravitates towards value. Wherever there, will, there is value, there will be money. So make yourself a more valuable person and money will come to you. So join Smart Stewards wherever you are in the world. You can pay in foreign currency, you can pay in Naira, and let's build wealth together. Thank you so much, ma'am. So much. How can somebody is asking, how can I buy shares from Coca-Cola? Okay, so, so you, how do people buy shares? You, got, you can buy um, shares in Nigeria through different asset management companies. I can mention their names. So, uh, this is not specific advice in any way. I'm just telling you there is ARM, there is AfriVest. Uh, in our club, we use AfriVest as our partners. There is um, AXA, Mansa, there is Tamika. Some of them have stock broken for, uh, arms. So you can, you can have an account with them and buy shares through them. What are some of the shares in Nigeria you can buy? My own personal policy, if I use your product, I will own you. I've been using MTN for over 15 or 16 years. I buy MTN shares. I use iPhone. So, and then you can buy shares overseas. There are apps like Bamboo, like that you can use to buy shares. And you can buy $10, $20. I use Apple, I buy Apple. I use um, Amazon, I buy Amazon. I pay Facebook. You know, so just Facebook. like that's how. I mean, you just go online and say, how can I buy shares in Nigeria? And you'll be able to get the information. And you can, you can email us at info at smartstewards.com or go to smartstewards.com. If you go on my link or on my page or smartstewards, you will see how you can join us. Thank you so, so, so very much. Okay, just by the way, somebody is asking about booking information. Okay, I'll, I'll tell my EA to check the WhatsApp message you sent, please. What a nice, what a nice. Coach Shola, thank you so, so, so very much. Please go on her website and then follow her on Instagram, at underscore Adesha King, you will thank me. I'm telling you, all the information you need, you'll find there. So join her club. I'm a member of the club. She's my personal financial advisor. She's a blessing. And I'm so grateful for tonight. Thank you so thank very you. much again, Shola. So, at this generation, you. appreciates you. Give her a lot thank of voice. I'm having fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of this tonight. Next week's Tuesday, there is a powerful, powerful testimony that you will be hearing. Next week, Tuesday, just get ready. Till, till then, please have a great, great night. 
we're going to save this and then maybe by tomorrow you'll be able to watch it on my youtube channel but for now it will be on my um instagram page and later it will be moved to my youtube channel god bless you all thank you for being a part of this have a blessed night